All right, Kevin here. Welcome to the Claremont Classic Garage. Today I was mucking around in the barn getting some old cars started up and brought out and cleaned up a little bit uh, so I could put them back into use. So I thought I'd introduce you to another one of our fleet. This is Project Landshark. It's a 1968 Ford XL convertible. Now, me and 68 Fords have a very, very long history. I've been a 68 Ford guy longer than I've been a Mopar guy, and I've been a Mopar guy for a long time. It all started when I was about 16 years old. I was working part-time in this restaurant, and of course, being a 16-year-old kid, I was always reading car magazines. I always had the Auto Trader, the Buy and Sell, the Simcoe Shopper, the Triad, all those old print um, classified papers that used to be around before the WWW put them all out of business. And this guy that worked there said, oh, young guy, you're looking for a car? I'm selling a car. Well, what are you selling? I've got a 68 Galaxy 500 convertible. I heard that. Convertible? I lost my mind. I went over there on the bus or with my dad's car or something and I bought the thing. I gave the guy $300 for it. It had a flashy copper paint job and a really slick custom sheepskin interior. It was a 302 with an FMX transmission and uh, I think it had a WER rear end which is the granddaddy of the 8.8. .8. Anyway so this thing came home and my dad took one look at it and said oh that's really nice. And he went out with his jack and a hammer and started poking 10,000 holes in the frame. Anyway, that was the end of that car. But uh, I really fell in love with the, the car, with the shape, with the style. It was a Galaxy 500. It didn't have the hideaway headlights and stuff and all the extra trim that this one has. But it was the same shape. Um, I just fell in love with it. So what we ended up doing was my dad was working on his 53 F100 at the time. He got the engine and transmission, and, and it was um, in that truck, wow, for over 20 years. We just took it out a few years ago because the unleaded fuel finally took out the, the cylinder heads, and we got a really good deal on a 5.0 roller motor, so we just put that in it. But um, that, that aside, um, we sold off what parts we could. I kept a few parts that I think I might need because I was bound and determined to find another one. So for the next, I don't know, year or so, my friend Jamie and me, um, every Friday we'd be in the buy and sell. And if there was a 68 Ford convertible, man, didn't matter where it was, we'd go look at it. And every single one of them had a bad frame. Just how it was back then. Uh, the, the salt was not kind to these cars. So um, one day I took the dog out for a walk. This actually happened. Can you believe this happened? I took the dog out for a walk. I went down to the end of the block turned went another block over and looked there's this house there the garage door i had never seen open today the garage door was open and there was a white 68 galaxy 500 convertible sitting in there on axle stands i, I, I couldn't believe it i went in and i banged on the door and i and lady answered it. she said it was her son's car it was an abandoned project and she'd really like to have it out of there and that i should talk to him uh, i said okay let me have a look at it i went in the garage um, it was on stand, so it was easy to have a look at it. The frame in it was good. The body was pretty rough, but the frame was good. Um, so I give the guy a hundred bucks for it. And an hour later, it was in the driveway. And that's, that's how I got my, like, I got my first one. So, um, in here, I'll insert a picture of the old copper one that I bought for 300 bucks if I can find it. And I'll, I'll put in a picture or two of my, uh, white 68 Galaxy 500 convert after I got it fixed up. Uh, don't get me wrong, it was nothing to write home about. It was uh, uh, a 17-year-old kid's body job, and we pretty much had to replace everything from the door handles down. It was it was pretty tough, but 
it was a good car, man. It was a, it was a real, it was a hypo car. It was a Z code, uh, three ninety GT motor. It had a, uh, I think a 300 track lock rear end. It had a C six. The thing would really scoot. Let me tell you, probably because about 500 pounds of it had rotted off and, and, and fell on the road over the years. It was a big galaxy, but it probably weighed the same as a Mustang. <laughs> there wasn't much left to it. Anyway, I drove that around for a couple of years and then I sold it off. And then I always had 68 Fords on my mind for years and years and years and years. And I guess seven or eight years ago, I was on Kijiji and I just happened to type in 68 Galaxy. Poof. And this thing popped up. It was in Woburn, Massachusetts. I took one look at it. Wimbledon white with a red interior, just like my old one was. And I just said, ah, I must have this car. And next thing you know, I was in my truck driving to Woburn, Massachusetts, and we brought it home. So that's the story of how this one came to be. I'm reliving my youth. <laughs> so uh, the long and short of it is, it's a really, really nice original car. Uh, from the doors forward, it's original paint. Uh, from the doors back, so the quarter panels and the trunk and everything, it, it was painted uh, at some point. Now, I did actually... I actually was able to track down the original owner of this car. He's a fantastic, wonderful 90, I guess he's 94 year old now, gentleman from, uh, from Pennsylvania. And he told me that, um, the one quarter panel was replaced in 1969 or 70 because of an accident. It had the back end of it painted because his wife backed it into a tree. <laughs> so, um, and then somewhere along the line, it's rotted out the rear cowl. There should be a, a seam here on each side. This is a very, very normal place for these cars to rot out. And this one's been repaired there, both sides. I really don't care. It's it's so minor. It's a, it's a little thing in a big ship, my friend Frank says. Um, anyway, you can see here the chrome and the trim and everything on it is really nice. One thing I did do when I got it, it had these skinny little five and a half inch Ford wheels on it. Uh, I really didn't like those. So I got some... 15 by 7 Chrysler wheels and got them fixed up and put some uh, it calls for 215 75 15 tires these are 225 70 15 so a little lower profile a little more meat they go nice on the 7 inch wheel the only problem was the Ford hubcaps would not they just refused to stay on the Chrysler wheel so I found a nice set of uh, old school Chrysler turbine hubcaps it is what it is. I think somewhere down the road, maybe I'll put a set of Magnum 500s or something on it. Uh, I've seen a few of these with Magnums, and they and they really, really look sharp. Um, the interior, it's mostly original, and it does show its age. Ford had major problems. Their seats are terrible. They always fell apart. Like look at the look at the driver's seat. It's all deformed and disintegrating. Ford also, you can tell every piece of the interior is a different a different color. They were making their own plastic and vinyl and stuff back then, and they uh, they just weren't very good at it. It, it doesn't it doesn't age well, but I, I mean you can dye the stuff and get it back looking looking respectable. So uh, at some point in time we'll get that fixed up. This convertible boot cover it, it's supposed to be red. I have the original red one that came with the car, but it's it's pretty ripped and torn up. So, um, I, I got this black one out of a car that I, that I parted out. Um, I've parted out a few of them since I got this car. I got, um, I got a Highland green. It was a beautiful car in its day. It was Highland green with a parchment bucket interior, a 302 car. Um, but it was so, so rotten. But the best thing about that is I got the entire bucket seat interior out of it. So when I redo the interior in this, it's going to go to the uh, buckets with the console and the floor shift. I've got a factory AM FM radio I'm going to put in it. It, it took me a long time hunting, but I found the, the setup for the, to put the rear speakers in it. Yeah, it's going to work out. It's going to work out pretty nicely. Um, what else can I show you? Oh, this car, it's a 392 barrel. So that's a Y code in 1968. It's nothing to write home about. It's just a, you know, just a, an old engine. It does its thing. It moves the car around. It's got a horrible exhaust leak. 
The exhaust manifold on this side is pretzeled. I took it all apart and tried tried a new gasket. Didn't help. So I've, I've since gotten another pair of exhaust manifolds. I took them to the machine shop, had them resurfaced. So um, when we change the engine, that's when I'll put the new exhaust manifolds on it and it'll be good to go. So yeah, what happened was um, this engine, it runs good and everything, but it's got 115,000 miles on it. Uh, the transmission has literally never been touched. It's got the same mileage on it and it just, it works okay. But the engine, you can tell it's, it's, it's tired. I gave it a compression test and it's lackluster at best. So I had this grand plan. I was going to buy, um, because the engine's healthy, it'll be all standard. Everything will be standard in it. So I said, oh, I'll just get some bearings and a, and a good oil pump and I'll, you know, kind of deglaze it and, and rebuild it. Well, before I could buy all the parts to do that, I saw an ad on Kijiji uh, for a 1968 uh, LTD. And a fella, strangely enough, same age as me, he got this 68 LTD back when I was mucking around with my first 68 Galaxy 500 convertible. And uh, his car came from Texas. And it got here. And... Uh, he took the engine out, sent it to the machine shop. He took the transmission out, sent it to the machine shop. The engine was completely done. 30 over, crankshaft, you name it, a proper overhauled engine. Same thing with the transmission, all done. He put it back together, put it back in the car, and then life happened, and he got doing this, that, and the other thing, and he never touched it again. So uh, he was storing it on his uncle's farm. His uncle passed away. And he was moving, and he lost his storage, and la la la. Anyway, I got there with the trailer, and I got that car, plus all the parts from another one that he'd parted out for five hundred bucks. Um, so I came home, and I basically got a brand new three ninety engine, and it's been updated to GT. It's got a Thunderbird intake on it. Sounds like it's got the cam in it too, um, and the the C six is all redone. It's got a converter. It's got a shift kit. Nice, nice stuff for 500 bucks. So rather than mess around trying to overhaul this stuff, nobody cares if a 68 Galaxy is numbers matching. So we're just going to clean up that engine and tranny and drop it in this car. And that's the, the easiest way to do it. And I'll have a nice fresh powertrain in it and we'll be good to go. The only thing left I do have to find, um, this car has a 274 one wheel peel gear in it. It's a nine inch Ford. So I want to go to a three inch, uh, 300 ratio with track lock like I had in my, my old one. And then this thing should, uh, should scoot, scoot pretty good. Hey, eh? that'll be all right. And I'm also toying with the idea of putting a five speed in it. Maybe. Um, I got to see, I got another experiment I'm doing to see if I can get Mustang stuff to work in a big old galaxy. And uh, if that happens, I got to, I got to see what my options are for mounting it to the 390. Cause I, I lucked into a, a really good deal on a, a Tremec 3550. Um, if any of you know what that is, it's the granddaddy of the TKO. Um, it'll stand up to this 390, no problem. I don't drive it too hard. So I kind of think that'd be cool. It's a great, great big car with a with a 390 GT engine and a five-speed. Be fun. You could run the thing on the highway 90 miles an hour all day. Hey, eh? But I don't know. This is such a such a sleek car. They They really sleeked them up. From the, the galaxies, everybody knows. I put the, the stacker headlight one, 65, 66, 67. Uh, 68, they kind of had a whole new, a whole new attitude toward it. And they, and they started, they started sleeking them up. And I just, I just always loved these cars. Despite being a Mopar guy all my life, the one car that I've probably had more of than anything is 68 Fords. I've had piles of them. Um, you have to buy them too when you see when you got to buy it because the parts on this car, uh, every single part is one year only. 
It's all 68 only. Um, 67 and 68 share doors. And um, the, the, the glass is the same, 65 to 68. This stuff is the same. But aside from that, uh, anything that's painted is unique to 68. Anything that's chrome, unique to 68. The whole interior, unique to 68. So when you find a deal on a 68 Ford, you got to buy it for 500 bucks. If you get two parts that you can use off of it, you're, you're winning. Anyway, let's crank this thing up and see how she sounds. It, it originally had single exhaust. When I bought it, it had, it had dual exhaust on it, but they had, um, glass pack mufflers and they had the tailpipes pointing at the inside of the back bumper. Things sounded like a like a race car. It's just it's not that kind of car. It's a it's a classy convertible. It shouldn't sound like a race car. A little grumble is okay, but so anyway, I um, I went back to factory style mufflers. I I I fixed the tailpipes and put the turndowns on them coming out where they're supposed to come out. And you know, I started it up and it still didn't sound right. I just didn't like the way it sounded. And I said, you know what? I remember my 68 500 had a factory H pipe on it. So I went underneath and I with a hole saw and I cut a hole in each side and I welded the crossover in it. And when I started it up, even Deb came outside. She says, now it sounds like your old one. Hey, what do you think of that? It's just got a nice, nice grumble to it. I like it. Let's take it for a ride, should we? Don't need no stinking seat belt. We're not going on the road. Okay, let's go backwards first. At least in here you can't hear the wicked exhaust leak. It's so embarrassing. The manifold is just pretzel. Alright. Thing with convertibles is. A lot of people don't understand them but I'll tell you once you've had one <laughs> you can't live without one I love my convertible and I haven't driven this thing I gotta tell you in years it's been parked in the barn for about four years because the exhaust leak is so embarrassing and I keep saying oh why don't I change the engine I'll fix that well I haven't quite got around to changing the engine yet have I anyway my old Ford so you can technically put me down as a Mopar guy with a Ford problem this ain't the only Ford around here you've already met the holiday rumbler and you've met trusty rusty and you've met the 1947 2n uh, there's a few more Ford tractors you haven't met yet and one more Ford car that I'm uh, that I'm saving saving uh, for later I mean I started out a Ford guy I was Ford 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 uh, and then somehow I got switched over to Mopar well I know how I got switched over to Mopar <laughs> but when I bought that green 70 duster is how I got switched over it was just supposed to be a winter car while my other galaxy was parked for the winter anyway we'll put her in the garage and uh I kind of think sooner rather than later I'm gonna change the motor and tranny and we'll get this puppy back out on the road where she should be. Anyway, that's your introduction to the, the 1968 Ford XL Project Land Shark. Hope you enjoyed your tour of it. If you liked it, go down there, hit the like button, hit the subscribe box, hit the bell for notifications, leave a comment, share it. It makes me happy to see you do all those things. Anyway, thanks for watching the Claremont Classic Garage, and we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.